the hell are the ones, Brother Donnie? Thought I'd like to take you on a little fishing excursion with me. I think I'm gonna start doing maybe a little encouragement devotional. Maybe once a week. Nothing set in stone, but I love to fish and I love to talk. So I thought, well, what we'll do, we'll get together and we'll fish and talk. <laughs> Can't beat that. So we're going over to our uh, uh, going over to our pond here. We're going over to our pond, and we got about a two two and a half acre pond. The Lord's blessed us with and. It's full of brim and bass, and I love brim. I think brim is one of the best eating fish there is, and everything's greening up, man. We're right here a few days before Easter. Time to start watching from old no-necks. That's what we call snakes down here in Alabama, no-necks, and we got a lot of no-necks around. Mosquitoes, heat, and snakes. Water moccasins, rattlesnakes, Copperheads, but if you keep your wits about you and kind of watch, usually they'll let you know or they'll just scurry out of your way. Yeah, I thought we'd get together and spend a little time together, fish a little bit. And I had ordered that, uh, I had ordered that camera holder that goes on top of your head, but I'm telling you, that thing's so heavy, it just made my head hurt, so. I'm going to use a tripod here. Now let me show you what I'm going to fish with to start with. I'm no expert fisherman, although I've been fishing just about all my life. And if you can see this, this is a chartreuse rapala. And in my opinion, this is one of the, the best baits for bass and brim. Uh, and like I said, fishing just lets you you know, you get to kind of forget about your problems and and just, you know, focus on God's creation. I'm going to move you a little closer here so you can see. Might enjoy the water a little bit better. Let's see. Let me set this tripod back some so you can see that there. Yeah, get a little straighter. Kind of hard to do like this, but... Yeah, so we'll have to spend a little time fishing, talking. You know, Jennifer and I, we we do a lot of business on, well, not a lot of business, but we do some business on Facebook Marketplace. And, you know, we've been noticing that it seems like nowadays nobody's word means nothing. People make promises to you. They'll say they're going to meet you. They'll say, yeah, we're interested, or yeah, we'll hold something, and man, it's just like people's word just don't mean anything anymore. And I want to talk to you a little bit about that uh, for a few minutes. You know, we as believers, we have a different standard, and we should walk as a different standard, and I'm really concerned about, for the future of my children and my grandchildren, I have one, of what it's going to be when they get older. What is in the world is the world going to be like as they get older? And if people are breaking their promises now and their word don't mean anything to them now, how is it going to be in 25 years? You know, there's a time in our country when someone's bond, someone's word was their bond. But now it's done got to where... You know, people don't stand for nothing. They stand for their own truth. And as a believer, and as a pastor, it kind of puzzles me, to be honest with you, because, oh, I missed him right there. Did you see that? Lord, have mercy. I was talking to y'all, not paying no attention. But that's all right. Uh, as a pastor, in the denomination which, of which I pastor in, there's supposed to be something like 50,000 churches. And I can't remember how many millions upon millions of Christians in those, in that denomination. That's just one denomination. And if you put all the Christians that say they are Christians, that say that rather that they are Christians in America, if you put all them together, 
folks, it doesn't take a rocket scientist to understand that something is amiss. There should be difference in our country. Either one of two things. Either there's not as many Christians who say they're Christians, or the ones who say they're Christians, an awful lot of us don't walk the walk that we profess to be. And I think we as Christians, it's so important that we have pure character. Now, of course, we're going to fail at times, but we need to set out to fulfill what we say. And, and just an example here, and I'm not calling anybody out for sure, but just a, a lame example, like on some of these Facebook things. And some of the people that made uh, promises, etc. You go on their Facebook page and they cover it up with Bibles and praying hands and crosses and Jesus this and Jesus that and bless you and bless this. And and I'm going to tell you, just for that one example of, of standing by our word, that's a poor testimony of the Lord Jesus Christ. And what you got to remember is when we become Christians, we're supposed to have the Spirit of God living inside of us. So we should be different. I tell you, I love the way that chartreuse pops out on that on that water there. I don't know if you can see it very well, but all I'm doing, I'm throwing this thing, and it's really a top water lure for when they're really hitting good. Uh, later on in the spring, they'll start tearing things up top water. And I'm just working that thing through there. And what that bait's supposed to do, it's supposed to imitate a wounded fish. You know, bass and brim are predatory fish. And uh, I just love the way that those colors shine in that water. But getting back to my thing there, if we're going to be Christians and say that we love Christ and say that we serve him, our life should indicate that. Our life should show forth fruit. And I know there's a lot of gardeners and farmers that watches our channel here and it's an easy example to see what a fruit tree is or that, you know, peaches don't come from apples and apples don't come from peaches. So the point being, if we say we are Christians, our life should match what we say. And, you know, I think it's so easy believism today. We've had it so easy in our country. We hadn't had to really struggle much as believers. Nobody's kicking the door in on us, and I think we've just got plain out soft. And I know that the government is going towards that point to where we will have to see what side we're going to be on. There's going to come a point to when you're not going to be able to hide on either side. You're either going to follow Christ or you're going to follow the system. And that's where we're headed. And I want to encourage you today, if you're struggling with your walk with the Lord, listen, I'm all about evangelists and people preaching revival, but folks, you don't have to wait till there's a tent revival. You don't have to wait till there's a famous preacher that comes into town. Any time that you can do a little better today than you did yesterday in Christ, you've had revival. Your Bible says that the Lord, he's given us all the gifts. He's, he's given us everything we need. So I want to encourage you today. If you're having trouble where you struggle, press into the Lord. Find you some good friends. Find you some good Christian friends. Press into the Lord. And we may can make a difference. You know, it doesn't have to be where we're Christians are laughing stocks and we're called hypocrites and as a matter of fact, that's a poor testimony to Christ. It can be different in our life. I just wanted to give you a little encouragement. I tell you what, they're not, they're not biting on this side. We'll, we'll roll right over here to my right. Let me reel this thing in. See if I can pick this tripod up here a little bit. Yeah, I need to cut this grass out here. It won't be long. These old no-necks will be... They'll be coming right on out for sure. Uh, let me straighten you up here. There we go. Let's 
see how that looks. I'm trying to get to where I can kind of kind of maneuver some of these things. I had high hopes for that uh, that little thing you wore on your head, but boy, it really hurts your head. And I'll just be frank with you, I felt like a fool wearing that thing around. It's like I had a big box on my head all the time. So I decided to use the tripod here. But I love fishing. You know, my wife, she comes with me sometimes, both my girls and Luke, they love to fish as well. I've been fishing since I was a kid and it's just such a, such a relaxing, even if I'm not catching nothing, that's all right. I just like being here at the water and kind of celebrating the things the Lord has done. But <clears throat> he really wants, he wants you to have all that, the, all that is his. And he's given you gifts. He's made you how you are. And he wants you to walk in his righteousness and to fulfill the ministry. And I know all of us, everybody listening to this is not a preacher. Everybody's not a public speaker. But everybody can do something for the Lord. Everybody can pray for somebody. Everybody can be an encourager to somebody. Uh, everybody can uh, write letters to people that may be in need. Everybody can, can pray for your own pastor at your church. You know, there's always something you can do. And that's what we want to try to do on our ministry channel at the Cross Community. We just simply want to be a blessing to people because from what I found on YouTube, and I never knew this, there's an awful lot of people in this country that's either been burnt by the local church or been burnt by people and just won't go to the local church. Number one, I want to encourage you to find a local church. Number two, if that's not an option, find a place that you can get friends, whether it be online, preferably in person, and hang in there with them and pray for one another. And I know I, circumstances may not be ideal all the time. You may not be, you know, flesh and blood together. But, you know, we have to rely on, because I'm going to tell you something, folks. God hadn't expected the government to take care of his people. God expects his people to take care of his people. And we are the, it is a true statement that we are the hands and feet of Christ. He's put his spirit in us so that we can take care of each other, so we can honor and serve him, and so that the end result will be that he's glorified. And that's what we want to do. That's how we want to live our life, to the glory of God. I'm going to throw one more time, and then that's going to be it. It's still not quite warm enough, I don't think. It's still, it's 68 today. But I don't think they're, I don't think they're quite gone into that phase where they're really eating it up. They will soon. I love these little chartreuse repellers. They are so versatile. They sell them in different colors. You can get what's called a broke back repeller, which is, it's essentially two sections of this. But love that little lure. Well, I hope you've enjoyed our time together. And if I can be of any assistance to you, let me know. I want to hang out with you a little while, enjoy outside. And until I see you next time, it's Brother Donnie, formerly known as Country Homestead Preacher, but still known as Brother Donnie. I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.